Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be going over how to do some cinematic lighting in Blender. Um, this is the current lighting setup that you see here and it's actually super simple to create and I wanted to show you guys a few tricks on how you can accomplish something like this pretty quickly, hopefully within less than 10 minutes. So this is the file right here. Um, I'll try my best to upload this to Gumroad for you guys, but I'm actually just going to go ahead and open up a new document and we're going to aim to basically recreate exactly this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new document in Blender here. I'm going to first take this light and I'll just keep it there for now. It's a point light, so you, you start with the point light in the cube. I'm going to snap to our camera. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just quickly center our camera. I'm going to give it a 45 degree angle. I'm going to make the X coordinate 7 and the Y coordinate negative 7. And then for our Z, I'll make that 5. And then everything looks good. We're at a 50 millimeter lens. I'm going to actually switch over to Cycles Render Engine. And I'm going to set this to GPU and denoising can turn, be turned on. And for our light paths, I'm actually just going to set everything to 10. You don't have to set volume to 10 uh, unless you really want to. One, two, three, four. So we'll make that a total of 40 light paths. And on the right hand side here, just make everything else 10. And then where it says filter glossy, I'm going to click on zero. And everything else you can leave the way it is. Max samples, I'm just going to make that 300. You really don't need many. And then I'm going to keep our output resolution the exact same as it is. Now let me go ahead and quickly save this to the desktop as tutorial lighting. Um, I just like to save frequently. I'm going to head over to our rendered view. And I'm actually going to add in a floor plane. I'm just going to scale it up so that it's just big enough to be outside the camera bounds. And I'm going to make it go right below our cube. I'm going to move it on the z-axis. Now I'm going to click on our cube and I'm just going to add a little bevel modifier here with five segments. I am going to go into our normals and auto smooth that. I'm going to right click shade smooth. Then I'm going to go into my world properties and I'm going to make the background color dark. So I'm just going to make it basically just black. Um, and then I'm going to take my floor. I'm going to create a new material and I'm just going to make this have a low roughness, high metallic, something like that. Um, and then we can come back and adjust that later. Maybe we should make it a little bit more gray. Now, this is what, what I want to do is I actually want to add a shader to this as well. And then we're going to go ahead and adjust our lighting. So I'm just going to give this a brand new shader. I'm going to make it metallic with just a lower roughness. That's fine. So it's basically just like sort of like a metallic shader, um, kind of like Chrome. So I'm going to take our light from the top view here. I'm actually going to go into solid view so it's a little bit easier to see everything. Now, what I want to do is actually want to put this light behind our cube over here, and then I'm going to duplicate it twice. So I'm going to duplicate it once and put it on this side somewhere, and I'm going to duplicate it again, put it on this side. So the goal is we're going to have what is what I like to call a backlight, which is going to be this light right here, and then these two lights are going to be our warm and cool lights. So I'm going to just click on my right hand one right here, and I'm going to go to my color, and I'm just going to make this blue. Also for the radius, I'm going to go ahead and adjust that to 2. And we can keep the power at 1,000 and kind of come back to that later. And then for this one, radius of 2, keep the power at 1,000. And then I will just make the one on the left some kind of pink color. Um, and now if we go into render view real quick, you'll start to already see some lighting right here. But here's what I want to do. I want to snap to my camera view. And I actually want to go over to our lights, um, our colored lights. And I actually want to bring them down on the z-axis. So with both of them selected, I'm going to do G, Z to bring them down until I kind of like what I'm seeing. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and select our backlight, and I'm going to bring this really far down. Now watch what happens when I bring it just below this cube. You see how everything changes? So I'm going to keep bringing it down, and I'm actually going to adjust the radius to 2 as well. Keep bringing that down until we have just a slight gradient on the top here. Now if you really want to get fine-tuned with it, you can... Um, you can actually click on the location and do negative two and two, and it'll be perfectly centered back there. And then you can just adjust your Z axis here to get the desired look. Now I'm gonna actually go ahead and add in another object here. I'm just gonna add in a torus. I'm gonna move it over here, scale it down. I'm just gonna give that a subdivision surface modifier, shade that smooth. And then I'm gonna click on the torus, and I'm gonna shift click the cube, control L, and link the materials. So now our torus has the same exact shader as the cube. And then I'm gonna click on R, which is our shortcut to rotate. And I'm just gonna give this a nice rotation here. 
Um, so far, everything's looking pretty good. I'm actually gonna go to my side view, select my plane, and I'm just gonna move it up so it's barely touching the bottom of the cube. That way the cube actually looks like it's sitting on the surface here. Um, and then I'm gonna add in one more object and that will be a sphere. I'm gonna move it over here, scale it down. I'm gonna also copy the materials from our cube and I'm gonna give this a subdivision surface modifier and I'm gonna shade that smooth. Now everything is saved and everything looks pretty good so far. Now here's where you can really mess around with the radius of the different lighting elements. So we obviously have our blue on the right and our pink on the left. So I just wanna show you guys how much of a difference the radius actually makes. So I have the right one selected here. Right now the radius is at two. Watch what happens when I drop it to 0.5. See that difference? It's very subtle, but you, you can see it if you look right here on the corner of the, um, of the torus and I turn this down. See how much harsher that gets as I turn the radius down, right? So if you're looking for very, very harsh shadows, turn the radius down. If you're looking for softer, more diffuse shadows, you wanna turn that radius up. Um, so that's, this is basically it guys. And now you can really like fine tune the location. So I'm going to take my right hand light here and I'm going to slide it back and forth on the X axis to get my desired look. That looks pretty good. I might even lower it on the Z axis a little bit. I kind of like how we have this under rim lighting. So guys, this is where you get to be as creative as you possibly want. And again, you can select your floor plane, scale that up and you can mess around with those settings as well. So if, you, if you're just looking for something that's really, really flat and dark, you can actually change your color here, turn it a little bit darker so we're a little bit more focused on all of this up here and our actual lighting. Now I'm gonna go to my pink lighting and I'm gonna actually move this down as well and I think I'm gonna slide it back and forth on the Y axis to see what we can come up with here. This obviously is like really intense but if we start to drift it away, you see we have those subtle pinks come in. I'm actually going to do the x-axis as well. Like I said, guys, you can really make this whatever you want. I think this looks pretty cool. And then let's say you do want it to be even more intense, right? You go ahead and click on your shader for all of our objects here, that nice metallic shader that we made. And then if you just lower the roughness, you'll see even more intensity with these lights. And if you raise the roughness, you'll see it become even more diffused. So the material is also going to dramatically affect the way everything looks as well. It might sound obvious, but a lot of people don't think about this when they're setting up their lighting. And I think that the light in the back here, our white backlight, is actually just a little bit too intense. So I might turn the radius down a little bit. That looks a little bit better. And we still get that nice backlight. I'm actually gonna make this a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna make it a slight off-white, almost like, almost like a slight yellow. And what's really nice about this little panel right here on the right is we can actually adjust the saturation. So let's say we want it to be really yellow. We can easily do that. And if we want it to be a little more subtle, we can just slide this saturation down until we're happy with what we have. Now we're pretty much ready to render. Everything is looking really good. And what's great about this is you can click on any light you want, adjust all of your settings, and you can choose any color you want. If you wanted something a little bit more realistic, maybe you wouldn't choose this pink light you could make it something a little bit more warm, something more realistic like maybe orange or slight yellow. So like that might be something you would choose there. But I'm gonna go back to what I had before because I'm gonna use this for the thumbnail and I think it looks really nice. One last thing I'll do before we render is I'll actually just move my objects down towards the plane so they're barely touching the bottom. That looks pretty good there. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to move this down as well. And we can just go over some quick camera settings and then render this. I'm going to click on my camera. I'm pretty happy with the current focal length. Um, if you want to, you can click down on this viewport display drop down and you can just turn this value up for pass part out, which basically just narrows you in on this camera view. It makes everything else not transparent around the scene. So you're very, very focused on that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on depth of field and I'm gonna use our eyedropper tool to select the cube. And then I'm just gonna turn our f-stop down to 0.1, something really, really low, and just see how that looks. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe even just give it an f-stop of one. It's gonna be very subtle unless you have textures in your, or like objects in the distance. Like for example, if we took this sphere, duplicated it, and we moved it along the z-axis, or the y-axis all the way back here, 
and then we turned our f-stop back down to 0.1, you'll notice that now that sphere is very blurred. So you might not notice unless there's objects in the background. But I am going to delete that. I think everything is looking pretty good, guys. I'm pretty happy with this. Maybe just lower our roughness of our objects just a little bit more, and then we can select our plane. We can fine-tune that to however we like. So if we want it to be really dark and focus on the objects, we can, or maybe even slightly lighter with a low roughness. Kind of make everything sort of metallic. That looks pretty cool, actually. So this is, again, where you guys can come in here and do whatever it is that you'd like. You can even duplicate your material, and you can change the color. So we can make this a nice blue color, and we can make this sphere a nice, let's see, maybe like a nice pink color. Again, when you do these things and you adjust your materials, you can expect that your lighting will still affect these materials. As you can see, see how our blue light is giving off a purple um, reflection right here. So when you change your material, expect that everything else in the scene will change as well. So just keep that in mind as you go. So I'm actually going to revert all these back by shift clicking the last object and going to copy that material over. This is looking really good though, guys. I'm pretty happy with this and I think I'll probably go with this for my render or something very similar. Um, and then like I said, I'm gonna try to provide this file on Gumroad. I do have a bunch of stuff that I will be uploading on there. So let's go ahead and render this, see how long it takes. Shouldn't take long at all. It should take less than like 10 seconds, I think. Yep, it is almost done. Also, if you're seeing my glasses, I, I broke them, so I had to rubber band them together. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that lighting setup is super cool, and it can be reused in pretty much any scene, and you can completely customize it to your liking. Um, I would probably actually go a little bit higher on the render pass this year. It looks a little bit too smoothed over, but again, we don't have any materials or anything like that going on. It's literally just a principled BSDF, so nothing too crazy. But guys, I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I just wanted to drop this real quick because a lot of you have been asking me about lighting. Um, this is just a super simple lighting setup that you can use and replicate on your own. Um, not really much goes into it. It's really just all about experimenting with the actual positioning of the lights the radius, the intensity, and obviously the color. Um, but just with three simple lights, you can achieve this effect, and I, I think that's awesome. So it doesn't take much. But I do hope you guys enjoyed this. Please consider subscribing to the channel, and if you guys want to see anything in the future, please drop it down in a comment below. I'd be more than happy to cover it, as long as it's something that I know how to do in Blender. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you in the next tutorial.